Eamon, how are you? I'm well. It's a Friday. That's good. You're just admiring your own forearms there. Just, yeah. It's not often we get to see that anymore. I went soft in the old age, sitting in front of the computer all day. Yep. It's just... Not in that office work. Well, the chair reclines a good bit and you get your feet up onto the desk. It's TikTok's an awful distraction. So, we are with Mr. Eamon McCaffrey. If you can see this live, we're doing it live from his, his warehouse here in County of Armagh. Armagh. Yeah, I've got a few questions, a few things I'd like to talk about. So yeah, I've got a few questions submitted, so thanks guys. So, camera is. So yeah, just let us know if you can see us and hear us clearly. Just check that we're actually going live on Facebook. So how's things? Things are well, yeah. I can't believe that's the end of April. I can't believe it's four months of the year gone already. Like last week was Christmas. It's third of the year. Q, Q1 was a blink of an eye, and I uh, was chatting to the supplier yesterday and I was looking at a few things, and he turned around and goes, getting ready for Christmas then. And I'm like, not just quite, but I suppose actually, yeah. So, yeah, that's... Start thinking about Q4. It's crazy to think that, but it's the nature of the business. What about yourself? How's nice things? <laughs> yeah, flat out. Flat out. Here with the dog and enjoying uh, hospitality. Some. Cool, so uh, I think it'd be good if you give it just a quick overview of your origin, your origin story, as they say. Well, my father met my mother in 1950, no. Um, yeah, so my name's Eamon Caffrey. I'm from County Armagh, Northern Ireland. I was originally a teacher and was working two jobs, the way a lot of people do when you hear them starting out on Amazon. Teacher by day, nursing assistant by night. As fate would have it, it was a Filipino nursing assistant who was always talking on to me about the money he was making online and you know the money he's making off Amazon and buying baseball hats out of Tesco's and six pound in this and two pound in that. And I turn around and go, no harm do you, but it's 3 a.m. on a Wednesday morning. You're working not the best job in the world. If you were making that much money, why are you still here? And his response was very, very truthful. He was like, I have four young kids and this job has very good benefits and security and I don't want to take the leap of leaving that and go on full-time selling online but there's good money to be made at it i'm like right fair enough whatever you say and then one night i uh, i used to be very good at wasting time i was sitting watching a film on my laptop getting paid by the british government to do a job that i obviously wasn't doing um and he was like have you got a copy of your passport in that laptop and i'm like actually do and he goes right tonight you'll learn amazon and i was like something out of fight club tonight we make soap and he set me up an account and we get going, downloaded the app onto my phone and we spent the rest of the night walking around the ward scanning boxes of pens. Can I sell this? And that was it. One hour crash course. Here is the basics of how to scan on the app. A couple of days later, went to Tesco's and every two seconds I was screenshotting to send it to him on WhatsApp. Is this any good? And he's like, no, no, it's a million rank. That's never going to sell. And gone round and I was like, this is all nonsense. It's a scam. I was like, I've got time in my hands, not much to lose. I really didn't have much to lose. And I put 200 quid on a personal Halifax credit card, sent it in and went, this is for fellas over the places, you know, that know what they're doing. And I made my first couple of sales. I think my first sale was actually in France, but I'd made five sales before I'd realized what I'd done. And at that stage, I hadn't a clue, so I didn't know which one was first. Hmm. And it was like being given free drugs. Like yeah. it was so addictive. Um, I wouldn't say I've got an addictive personality, but it's just such a game. I and would. yeah, the money's fun. But when you're seeing numbers on a screen that look like phone numbers, I never see that money. Like I get disbursements 20, 30,000. You don't see that money. It's not as I'm going, well, hey, 30 grand disbursement. That let's go hard. buy a Ferrari. You know, it's, you've already that money earmarked for the next stock coming in. But that's where I started. started so so when, when was that? That was middle of August 2017. Cool. Coming up in six years. And six years. I was still working two jobs. And then I started that. And it was great because one of the jobs that I would do is what they call a special, where I had to sit for 12 hours straight and just babysit. So if the person was sitting there sleeping, you had 12 hours in near enough pitch darkness where you had to try and stay awake. And one of the best stimulating things to do was just sit and study keeper. I sat one night and there was a seller who I used to be really fascinated with and I had managed, now this is slight breach of GDPR. I asked the suppliers, could I have a copy of their, his invoice? 
and they said, no, we can't do that. GDPR, we obviously can't share that information. I'm like, fair enough. But you can have our copy of his invoice because that's our data. And I'm like, that works. And I sat one night and I went through every item on his storefront, worked out his profits, worked out everything, just studied him like a stalker. It was really fixated, learned all that, and then just went through. And I just hours, hours to spend. And I put it in filer in his four-hour work week. I would love to know how he does that. Well, four-hour yeah. work week, great. But no, I put in the hours. I put in that. Still run around like a head of chicken doing RA. And then from there, moved on to OA and... It wasn't organized enough to do all right away. Well, this is it. I mean, I get a lot of um, message from message from Catherine. Yeah, well done. Keep up the great work and success. So, well thank you. you, Eamon. Thanks, Kat. Catherine, for your message. Any questions? Feel free to drop them and get them answered. So, what was the progression then? Doing so RA. Started with RA, moved into OA because it allowed me. Scale or allowed me to scale, yeah. At, at sit now, I had a rule I would never purchase when I was in work because I was using open Wi Fi networks and I was too paranoid about people getting my credit card details, which nonsense. Um, scale source and then, and then stay all day purchasing on a Saturday. And then I was like, right, I need more time. And I got a VA. And the first thing I did when I got a VA was from now on, you create shipments and SKUs. I'm never creating another SKU, it is tedious pointless waste of my time and started automating from there started out with OA did well with OA but he's a Dell boy in me there's a chancer there's a gamer in me and I bought a job lot of cosmetics from Gumtree and because I was getting a 15 quid bottle of cosmetics for 150 I had really good margins and could be very competitive in price and that ruffled a couple of feathers of really big sellers who purchased one of my items and claimed it was inauthentic. And Amazon was like, here, Eamon, slight issue, ping us over an invoice and we'll get this sorted. And I'm like, um, zero paperwork. Went back to the guy, bought it off me. He's like, listen, my wife was claiming benefits and doing the double sell on these. We have burnt every shred of evidence that proves <laughs> we ever done this. Best of luck with your life. You're like, okay. And my father, who, as I said to him yesterday, has very little limited experience in business, but has kept me very much grounded and right in the last six years. Turn around and goes, this wouldn't have happened if you'd stop thinking about and actually do this properly and legitimately and go properly to suppliers. Hmm. And that was a massive paradigm shift in my business. And it's why I'm here because the nickel and diamond, you know, three bottles of shampoo from Superdrug, four tubes of mascara from Boots. It's a good start. But that's a palette of Huggies wipes. I can make one phone call and have another two palettes beside it within a week. You can't do that when you're buying stuff in boots. There is there is a workaround for boots actually, but we're not going to that. No, that's we're not going to that. So <laughs> yeah, I mean if if someone's watching this or watching the replay and wants to get started on Amazon, what would you recommend them do? Would you recommend them go straight into wholesale? Ooh. It all depends on personal appetite. Hmm. The people that I say here that say I want to go straight into wholesale, great. But there's a lot of professional business to it. And professional business isn't that professional. It's hmm. a lot of the sales rep I deal with. Like, like I had a sales rep come here from a company recently, flew over from England, and he came in and I was like, right, sales rep's coming here, got to put on a good show. 22-year-old kid got out of a hard car and I was like, ah, I'm wasting my morning. This is a child. And he was just like a kid in the candy shop seeing all this and going, wow, now do you do this? And what does Amazon work at? And there was nothing overly professional about it. But you do have to be able to run a business. You do have to be able to network, sort finances, sort that, you know, project uh, sales. And it's very hard to do that from day one with no experience. Yeah. Whereas if you want to get started, do what I did. I took a punt on 200 quid where I figured if I lost it, it's an expensive weekend, but that's about the height of it. I started with RA, I learned the game, I made a couple of, wow, I made five pounds on that, that's amazing, or I made a 20p loss, oh well, and I cut my teeth a wee bit, and then moved into OA and wholesale. Now, you don't have to go through it, that is what I did. I Tesco delivers, Tesco do deliver. When Tesco set up their first delivery route, they decided that they were doing it with 40 vans, I think it was around the London area. The first week they went live, they had no system. When the orders were coming in online, I think they were emailed in. 
they were handwritten on a sheet of paper and they were handed to a staff member, go and get that and put it in the basket. That was Tesco's system. They had nothing. Just get started. They had a deadline on an that day, whatever they had, pen and paper, third stock, find it, make it work. Were they profitable? No. Did they scale that into a massive game changer? Did they learn, learn a lot? Yeah. 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 Okay. But they didn't plan it out to the nth degree and then do it. And that is one of the biggest global companies. So people think that, you know, you need all this perfect planning. Get started. Get Let's on get started. Them. So if you, if you hear a bit of noise in the background, it is a live warehouse. So we've got uh, staff. Staff in. So a couple of questions. I think there's a great question from... Todd, you've already covered one. So Todd Michael asks, what were a couple of the pivotal points along your journey that took you to the next level of growth? Um, getting suspended was one of them. I that they nailed me on the 9th of September and I got reactivated again the 22nd, 23rd of December. So great sales the last couple of days. But I missed it all Q4, which was painful. Was um, that 2018? Was that? Yeah. Yeah. 2018. First we started Q4, 2017. I just, I just spent eight grand on a credit card and they nailed me. And I was that cautious starting off. I had the eight grand sitting in a bank account for next credit mm. card and it saved me because, mm. yes, I lost all the trading, but I had that limited capital in the company that I could afford to sit there and sit in my hands. I'm still working full time. That was one of them. I never officially went full time at Amazon. I technically am still employed at my last job. They've told me that they won't employ me until I go and get a reference from another company because it's been that long before it can come actively back. But January 2020, I, I it got to the point where I just needed to take a little bit of time off because I was getting too busy in my business. I just never went back. Never went back. Just never went back. January 2020, and then COVID hit. Now, COVID put me on my feet. No point in lying about it. I started tendering to a local government, and some of the contacts I was getting were pretty bizarre. Like, I had the police phoning me going, we understand you're selling masks. And I'm like, yep, is this how they're arresting people now? And they're like, we'd like 10,000. And my first thought isn't great, that's going to be a great order. The hand and heart first thought was, how much can I screw the police for? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I get too ambitious. Um, but yeah, so COVID put me on my feet there with government contracts and orders and stuff like that there. And the next thing was realizing that you, the Alice and the Shoemaker approach of, you know, you sell one pair of shoes today and you make two tomorrow and you sell two today and make four tomorrow. Great, great, great theory. But theory and planning never survives execution. If you want to have a cash flow business, you need cash. And I don't know too many people starting this. And one guy that approached me and goes, a 400 grand, I want to start cash. Everybody else is like, I have a thousand, I have 2,000. What can I do? And you're not putting in an order for 30, 40 grand, and you have two grand in your back pocket. Go get money. It is harder these days to get money than it was last year. Last year, yeah, definitely. But it is not impossible. I've had a guy message me on Facebook this morning. Hey, and you said we could have a chat on Friday from a finance firm I've never heard of. Gone. We would like to give you money, and they're not doing it out of the goodness of their hearts. They charge interest. Some of them charge extortionate, like what sellers fundings, fifty four percent APR. Like you might as well go and do deals with like loan sharks, but effectively what they are but yeah there is finance available what i encourage anybody just to go and take out finance on my say so no do your own due diligence yeah. make sure it works for you make sure you're comfortable with it like as i said to so many people amazon is gambling it is gambling there is no guarantee it is like investing in stocks and shares there is no guarantee that it's going to work out and like i said that white pallet behind us yeah i will have that sold in the next month or two I will not make money on it. That is painful. My break even is nine pounds something, and I'm selling it at seven eighty, seven ninety. It's but too many other sellers have come on the list and tank the price, yeah. and it is not making me money sitting there looking pretty. It has to go. It has to go. I think it would be good to kind of hear like some real successes that you had. I mean, 
just spent last last time I was here, it was uh, <laughs> September yes, twenty. Sir. Yeah, it was it was messy. It was September twenty twenty, and uh, you were what you were just treating the the ceilings or the, the roof and the. We just painted that actually. Thing. Painted the ceilings. I said you'd never fill this. You know, kind of level of sales and finance you had available there. I'd say you'd never fill this, and in fairness, it is pretty much half empty, isn't it? It is half empty, but that's only because, you know, You've got we're now more. working three days a week. Um, we have a shipping container out there full. I have stuff stocked in my father's shed, my brother's shed. Simply, mostly just garbage boxes out of the road. Um, so what is isn't to fill this. Yeah, so what's what's all this allowed you to do? You know, you bought a Lamborghini yet or you built a house or what's the what's this allowed you to do? Having this allows me to store. It allows me to maneuverability. Like there, if you can see over his shoulder, is a stack of cardboard boxes. That company won't deliver to me because I'm in Northern Ireland. So I have to send out there in college myself to arrange a pallet to come to Northern Ireland is 150 quid. Yeah. To arrange 15 pallets to come to Northern Ireland works at about 90 quid a piece. That is a substantial saving. But who in a domestic garage or who in a semi-detached house can store 15 pallets of boxes and operate on plus it cost me four grand so to be able to have the finance to do that we can operate at a much more efficient scale like we are putting out bundles on wednesday a bundle every four seconds we behind the camera here there is a shrink wrap machine yeah, that's awesome table and table behind it three men working which was frustrating because if it had been four it'd be oh, far God. more efficient than it was a fourth man missing and that allows us you've all them tables that can all work through weighed everything's weighed into boxes then all the pallets pretty much what's the camera sitting on at the minute oh, and then these sparkles nice. are loaded off the lorry so like that is a pallet of boxes behind us ready to go out there's i would say there's 10 grand in that pallet hand hurt oh. um and yeah we don't have to handball them up to the lorry so there's less damage so once you start building out more efficient systems there's less wastage it just allows me to scale a lot more as for building the house yeah i've managed to build the house um the roof of the house was kindly paid for by the business half of the kitchen was kindly paid for by the business uh this warehouse now i know you can't see the floor tiles but on paper, it is amazing how many tiles and bathroom units is in this warehouse. Um, that might have accidentally been put into my own bathroom. I'll say nothing about that. So yeah, um, I mean, roughly during COVID, how many units were you putting out a week, month? COVID was bizarre. So my normal sales died to death because I wasn't focused on them. <laughs> Gloves. There was one day I put out four hundred boxes of gloves in one day. There was there was days where I was um, so I'll not move that cage over, but like Royal Mail calls them Yorks. So they're a big cage you see in a supermarket. I I filled five of them one day in my local post depot. Um, we were having to borrow vans, borrow trailers just to move them down. Uh, Easter Monday, twenty twenty. I left the house half three, four a.m. Me and my dad borrowed a van, drove to Dublin, met a guy at the docks that I'd never met before, and unloaded something like thirty thousand masks into the back of a van, dodging checkpoints the way back up the road. It was bizarre, and um, and then the following week, I was putting in such a big order again. He was like, "Don't worry about that, mate. I've borrowed a looting van. I'll deliver right to your door." So it was bizarre the way things worked out, and. Um, and that really helped. I seen an opportunity. I did a bit of research on it and I just jumped at it. But I realized it was a bubble and it's so funny because a lot of suppliers were like, would you like masks? 2,000 masks, oh. 100 quid, free delivery. I've been offered pallets of hand sanitizer, 20 quid a pallet. Like Crazy. the pallet alone's worth eight pound. Yeah. So I, yeah, people got greedy and they got burnt where I, Realized it was a bubble, recognized my own limit, limitations, and stayed with him in means to calculate risks. I literally took the last mortgage draw down of my house, put it into stock, and bet the house on it. 
It's the one and only time I'll do that. Once that has oh. paid off, it is never well, used collateral. Yeah, that is my now, fortress of solitude. But at the time, that's what I did. Hence why there was that much money moving back and forth. Yeah. It's questionable accounting. Cool. So, yeah, like, what are you putting out in terms of units at the moment? Um, I put 12,000 a month, which is annoying me because I want to put out monthly. What's that mean? Profitable leads at the minute and cash flow. Cash flow. What we have done instead is last July, there was one week in July last year where our average sell price was 8.30 a unit. Our average sell price last week was 14.50. So we have been trying to increase the average sell price for our products, which allows us to increase turnover, maintain margins, and keep overheads lower. So it increases profitability, which mm. I, that book I gave you this morning, first page in the book, it said, I was running a million pound a year business and making no profit. I then sat out, worked out a plan. The next year I was doing a quarter of a million turnover but I had profit in my pocket at the end of the month that I could actually provide for my family. So like turnover is vanity. Like, yeah, I can buy big salary. numbers and say, look at this, did a million quid this year. You're not making any money, it ain't shit. Ain't shit. Um, go, <laughs> a question from someone, you can maybe lift your brogues up to prove that you're not, but do you wear Crocs in your warehouse? Uh. I'm not sure who that's from. Proper, proper brogues. Herbie Frog. We have a question choose. from uh, Andrew. So, hi guys, myself and my wife have been interested in starting a side business on Amazon. What would be your pros and cons of starting on the drop shipping? Hold on, let's read properly. And starting on drop shipping the product <laughs> to start with before jumping the purchase stock. No, thank you. No, thank you. No. Drop shipping. Too many margins, too many variables. I remember hearing a video done by a guy who did over a million quid a year on one item, and it was a charm bracelet. And his it was Dan who asked you about your Crocs. Dan, La... no, thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, the guy had did a million quid a year selling just dropship on one charm bracelet. His marketing budget for that was 300 grand. Oof, and right. it, he had made something like 10% margin. And you're like, it wasn't even, it was less. Was 4% margin. He made 40,000 or something. A million quid turnover, 40,000 profit, 40,000 pure profit a year, champion. And I think, going, but if his marketing budget had been a percentage or two the other way, he'd have made no profit. Yeah, a million quid good. turnover, no profit. And After fees and tax. You drop shipping, but from China, people don't want to wait. That's what that's why people pay a prime. People don't pay a prime because of the quality of the product. They pay a prime because they want it the next day. Well, it'd be good, Andrew, if you're still there, just to kind of clarify. So, are you talking about drop shipping from China, or are you talking about drop shipping from, say, a supplier where you can then buy the products <clears throat> and then send them merchant fulfilled? I would assume. Well, you know. You know, if, if, if you've that much confidence in the product selling, just buy two or three cases from that supplier and store them and sell them yourself. Mm. Like, well, it's, if you know it's going to sell, buy it and then sell it. It comes back to cash flow, but that sounds more like a cash flow business. It sounds like you don't have faith in your own business and you'd rather do drop shipping because you don't want to commit to it. If you don't want to commit to it, don't commit to it. But it's, it's like pulling out the pass. You don't pull out in a blind corner and I could don't know, we'll, we'll take a chance. You want to see a clear path and go for it. And once you've committed, commit and pull in, or it will have a very bad consequence. Um, someone I saw yesterday, it's a guy called Reezy Resells, pretty mm -hmm. big, famous, although he's no longer selling, but he was, he was asked about drop shipping, and he said in his last 23 years reselling, he hasn't met anyone who's feeding their family who's a drop shipper. It's just to sell a course, or it's just to do whatever, which was... Which was pretty interesting. Dropship, I mean, dropshipping does have a place, but I know like IKEA dropship. Yeah, IKEA, IKEA dropship kitchens, but it's one part of their business. It's not their whole business. It's it plugs in like a lot of local shops around here will effectively dropship. Like, should have been bed this morning. 
they technically Car dropshipped it. Carries the PC world. Uh... Where what they did was they keep one display model in stock, and when you place an order, they order it in. So rather than them having a warehouse full of beds and stuff for quite a season, they keep an example of the display model and then bring it in. That is effectively drop shipping. Oh. That works because they can't hold the stock and they're not going to have a big demand for them, but sir, and they can facilitate it. A lot of bricks and mortar shops will do that sort of thing. But as for just trying to advertise, I don't know, charm bracelets to sell them on, it's not my cup of tea. Yeah. Yeah, well, cool. I mean, Andrew would say, you know, if you've got any other questions, feel free to drop them and say if, if you're looking at drop shipping because your budget is an issue, you know, if someone wants to start off with wholesale item, what would you say they would need it for a budget? I my mean, first, it's a piece of string type question. Is, I always say my first order was 1800 quid because that's what I consider my first order. Mm. My first actual order is from Michael Palomino. Yeah. And I think it was about 700 quid. And the reason why I bought those items was I was buying wedding planners from Poundland, one pound purchase, eight pound sale, and four pound profit. That registered, no nothing. And it was great. And it sold out, and I drove around every pound land in the country, went to managers, got the last of the stock in Northern Ireland. And I was going on Amazon, and I was looking at the other wedding planners, again, loads of time in my hands. And I seen one, and was like, that's beautiful, that's one I want to be selling. Contacted the company, and they were like, here's our rep in Northern Ireland, go speak to him. And ordered from them, and like you had mentioned there are one question about negotiating prices. Yeah, I'll read it out um, now, yeah. Shoot to that one. Yeah, so how do you approach pricing and negotiations with your suppliers and customers? What are the what are some of the key factors you consider when setting prices? That's from Aaron. Well, we'll come back to features of that question, but I phoned them up, placed the order, and done my due diligence and you know, seven hundred quid order. I got Solid. twenty quid knocked off it and the delivery driver delivered it to my neighbor and insisted that the right place when the neighbor tried to explain where my house was. And the next time around, I think I got a little bit more of a discount. And the only reason I got a little bit more of a discount was I drove up and met him. I was leaving the country in three weeks and he was leaving. And he was like, hey, it'd be great to sit down, have a chat and have a coffee with you. Why don't we meet up in a couple of weeks time and have proper chat? And I was like, no, no, I'm leaving the country to go to Saudi to be a teacher. And he was like, Mate, I've never seen anybody as passionate about wedding planners as me. You shouldn't be teaching. And I had a friend with me in the car, and I go back into the car, and she looked at me and goes, You completely changed when you started talking to him. Like, I've known you as a teacher for two, three years. That was a completely different side of you. You're not meant to be teaching. That is what you're meant to be doing. And he's right. I couldn't give a shit about wedding planners. Really couldn't. I had them free, and I still didn't use them for my own wedding. But the process of doing it was what hooked me on it, but that's what got me started. Um, do you need a big budget? No. Are you going to be able to sustain it? It's one thing to say, hey, you can spend seven hundred pounds and get started. Yeah. Like, you can go and buy a car for 500 quid, but you're not going to drive it every day if you don't have the money for fuel, tax, insurance, tires. Um, there is going to be additional costs, um, but it doesn't mean you can't get started in the absolute definitive sense of the word. What I would say is, understand why you're doing it if you have limited time you want to put in one or two orders a month prep it on a salary and get it out the door mm. great go for that but understand what's your plan what's your reasoning and be happy with what you're doing like i do good numbers i still look at other people that are doing double triple what i'm doing like i want to be there and comparison is the theft of joy but you got it once you've set a plan do it stick with what you're doing stay in your effing lane and just commit to your plan because FOMO and shiny object system syndrome yeah. will cripple you. You'll keep jumping and not commit. Yeah, it's it's a real thing, and definitely, obviously, we're streamed to Facebook and Twitter and things. Yeah, it's very easy to to get tied up with. Oh, battery's low. Um, it's very easy to get tied up with what other people are doing, and uh, you know, comparing yourself to them. Everyone's run their own race, and yeah, it's it's just one of these things, you know run your own race, be very clear on your own plan, stick to it. So we'll, um, if, if anyone wants to have a chat with self, Rachel, Crystal to discuss like strategy on, it's probably in your bag at Eamon. Uh, just trying to get hooked up. So 
yeah, if anyone wants to have a chat, discuss strategy call with us, very welcome to do so. Bank holiday on Monday. We've actually got three calls booked in for, for Monday, which is bank holiday. And I kind of thought, what better way to actually spend some free time in and you know, sit the call with someone and yeah, get a plan sorted out and yeah, have a chat with full time Amazon seller. So we'll drop a link to book a call after the live. Yeah, and Andrew and Catherine, if you want to jump on a call, feel very free to do so. A couple of other questions. Uh, yeah, Georgina Eamon, she's a load of. Uh, Palette wrap, she overbought on. So, so, do you have any palette wrap? How much is it? Yeah, so Ge Georgina, like, can't really give you an answer with, without knowing how much it is. I've got palette wrap, but I'll take more. Right. Question from, you know, if, I think it was meant as a cheeky question. Well, so what are you actually selling him? There you go. Wesley's grassy. This one is. You get that one down. Maybe just leave it. That one is the Bubby's Wipes. Next one on up up here, that is all Funko Pops. That is Lenore Comfort and Sense Phillips um, bottle sets. Uh, what else am I selling? My staff member thinks that this is quite hilarious. That is what we are prepping right now. That one, if you want to find that one. Um, yeah, we do a lot of that sort of stuff. Fast moving consumer goods. And the reason I sell that is because it is fast moving. So yeah, FMCG. So if you run a cash flow business, you turn over cash. Yeah. Makes, Makes sense. sense. So. Here's the thing, you will always remember that one thing we made 20 or 30 quid profit on, it was class. And I had a Charlie Severa out here the other day looking at building work. And he said to me, you know, you should be buying clear outs and job lots and end of lines, you know, be great margins in those. I'm like there's fantastic margins in those, but it's very hard to be projected in cash flow and stuff like that when it's one hit wonders. You want consistent, consistent products. So over the shoulder, the top level of that yellow palette is items that I've been selling for the last year. There is piss poor margins on them, but they are turnover. Click a button palette here the next week. They turn over, they go, they sell. They are not exciting. Boring is amazing. Yeah. The most boring, the things that people like, I've had people tell me I won't take less than five pound profit. And I fully encourage that. And tell them that every deal they find at four pound profit, three pound, two pound, one pound profit, send them to me. I'll deal with the bullshit they don't want. And that is where I make most of my money. The deals that people think are shit, I sell them. A lot of them. And they go. So why do you think that is? Because people are lazy, people are greedy, and people want to be the millionaire tomorrow. And it's the same with the Amazon customers. They're lazy and greedy and they want that item there tomorrow. So they'll buy the two pound item out of Tesco's for seven pound that people are only saying there's only ADP profit in that. Like I, I had a guy, I had a guy put on Facebook and he's like, the whole thing's a scam. You buy an item, you sell it, you make 150 profit, the prep fees are 50p and you only make a pound. It's like great. Do that 20,000 times a month. And that's a hundred and what? 140, no, 240,000 a year profit. So yeah, you're only making a pound profit, but make it a quarter million a year. Just fill that out. I'll take that. Cool. Right, what are we doing the rest of the day? Sesh. Sesh, get on it. Sesh. Well, I don't know if you can handle it. The last time you were drinking here, you decided that was it and you haven't drank since. My last beer was in the shed. Was in the shed. That was 900 odd days ago. I'll be a thousand days mid June and hopefully I'll be in the Philippines. He gets a special token, don't they, don't you? Yeah. Aye. I do. Go quick. <laughs> yeah. Um, no more questions? You're not running live up already. I'm just getting into the swing of it. Well, a few more questions. And I think for me, like what I've seen with you especially is just being relentless. There's a 
an email. I'm going to do it for you. It's a really interesting email I got from like a marketer, and uh, you can check this out if you go to www.relentless.com. Picture me. It redirects to Amazon because Jeff Bezos is going to call Amazon relentless.com because that's the way he approaches business. And one of the they talk about a company in America. It's a nappy company. And long story cut short, they had built all these relationships with, with suppliers. And basically, Jeff wanted to buy that company. And they said no. And he basically just engineered it so that every listing they were on, Amazon would go on onto it, take over the listing, and then eventually go, do you, do you really want to do this? Yeah. Eventually sold the business to him for it was half a billion or something, which is nice. Nice. And yeah, it was just his approach. So relentless.com. And I definitely see the same sort of core value in yourself, if that's the right thing to say. Here's the thing. Like it's a it's a phrase I've started saying lately. And it's I see it so often when you, you speak to clients, you speak to sellers. I consider business to be a vehicle. Consider it as a car. You're the driver. Like I've spoke to people and they're like, we're gonna leave it a couple of months and wait and see what happens. <laughs> You're going, right, so you're going to just let, you know, current economic factors just drive your business for the next couple of months, and you're just going to wake up every morning and go, well, that's how that day went. Like, where do you expect to go? Like, where do you think your business is going to go if that happens? Yes, if you stumble and trip and develop a cure for cancer, you might make money by doing nothing, but chances of that happen are slim to know. If you don't have a focus and drive and know where you're going, what you want to do, you're never going to get there and it does take time and commitment like at the issue at the minute and you can't see it i piloted something at the minute and amazon is simply saying no our warehouses are full of that we're not letting you send any of it in we've raised three cases in two days i've told my vas your priority for the day is get on live chat and get amazon to explain to you why we're paying them thousands of pound a day in fees and mm. another seller is getting sales and i'm not so you just get at it, get it done. There's a solution for everything. Just figure it out. Tell me about the team. Well, tell us. I know kind of the team at the moment. Was it 22? Across two or three. My core team, I have 10 in the Philippines and two in Pakistan. So I have split my team. We have wholesale in the UK and we have OA in the US. The way in the US has been a slow burn and a slow start. We're only sort of starting now. We did six and a half thousand so far this month, and I'm buzzing about that. Nice. Very little profit due to the prep center. A lot of issues are a lot of issues getting money in, but we have it all set up nicely. Everything's just ready to launch and take off. I dumped a bit of cash there mid month, which is starting to reflect in sales now. Um, team couldn't live without them. Genuinely, I have said to my wife, Mike. My mother did tell me that my operations manager should have married her instead. Why? She she, is, she was a Miss Universe competitor. She is pretty oh. good looking. She is doing a mass at the for figures, decent figure too. And I is about as passionate as my business as I am. Yeah, she's phenomenal. So but the best thing you talk you said about, you know, building a business, what I want to get from it. Last July, she approached me and goes, hey, can I have a loan? I want to buy a plot to build a house. Yeah. She has the money within a day. Um, I'll not talk too much into that. I have plans there, but in case she might say this, I will not talk too much into that. But yeah, so good team there. The, she now heads up US, runs all that. I barely even log into the account. And the wholesale team, they're now at a point where they will source the items, create the order, email the order out, um, with the accounts that I have got um, credit lines with. The only way I know that, that order has been ordered is when I get informed about it or a Monday meeting. So I go, Eamon, we spent this much this week with this supplier. So that so palette over that, well. that yellow palette, I unloaded it off a lawyer this morning. That's what I know about that. I didn't pay for it, didn't do anything with it. Credit, all ordered. That will be prepped next Tuesday and Wednesday. I'll not be here and it'll be out the door. I'll never see and touch it. That did not happen overnight. Wednesday, I was in here. I was sweating blood. I've cut my thumbs. 
work on that machine because we were that fast prepping our bundles. There is Desim in here and I bloody love it, but we are getting to the point now where I'm just trying to get to a management level, which I hate because it's not where I want to be. I'd rather be in here. In the trenches? I'd much rather be prepping than sorting out accounts and finances and stuff like that because it's too much like an office job yeah. and I don't want an office job. I want to be like, here, there's your lorry needs unloaded. Let's go rally about the forklift. Just jump the forklift. Uh, good break, sir. Didn't yes, he spent two hours in here. Used that pallet truck to lift it up and put new brakes on it. Awesome. Um, any top tips for people who are kind of maybe been selling just over, just under a year, kind of find things tough at the moment, maybe hitting that, that threshold or just kind of what I would call a ceiling of complexity, you mm -hmm. know, maybe just getting to the point where struggling to any, any top tips there? Yeah. Realize that that's okay. Realize that that's okay. First of April last year was a Thursday and that will be forever burned in my mind because on one click of a button, 55%, 55% of the ASINs I was selling overnight became unprofitable. I wasn't drop shipping. I couldn't just stop selling those listings. I still had stock. I had to sell through. I really don't think I made much money in the month of April last year. I sat down for that Friday. That's right, yeah. I uh, didn't turn on a laptop. There was no point. All you were going to do was pick your head, looking at seller tool kit, looking at your margins and crying. I sat down with a file pad and a pen and paper, and I wrote out a plan, action point of what I was going to do, and I figured it was going to take me three months to recover, to sell through. Mm -hmm. And I accepted it. It took me a hell of a long time to realize that not every item you're going to sell is going to make profit. And it doesn't even matter because it's not about the item you're selling. If you have developed a product label, private label item that you and your kids developed and it's got serious sentimental value to you and that is a real personal item to you or it solves a really personal issue that you have and that's you, fantastic. They're baby wipes. I'm not overly passionate about baby wipes just not it's about the process for me so if i sell a pack of baby wipes and sell a little loss because the price is tanked and they're not moving and i have to sell them through i don't care because it is not the money i make in this five minutes it is not the money i make in that sale it is what i make at the end of the week the end of the month and the end of the year and the business at the end of the day is a financial tool for my life and they're like i have had comments where i checked out company house and you made very little profit last year and i'm like yeah but it annoyed me that i made any profit <laughs> if i can expense my entire life if i can provide wages for the local community if i can provide jobs for people in the philippines if i can provide new houses for people and my business doesn't make money but everybody's got a better quality of life great that is what it's effing about it's not about the individual profit and an item selling items at a loss to allow you for a turnover, to allow you to get to the next level, to allow you to get out of that low cash flow phase. Do it, get it done. Look at the bigger picture. I don't care about tomorrow, today. I care about 20 years down the line. I'm building a new shed, 100 grand. It's caused me a lot of hassle at the minute. And my goal for that shed isn't to use it for fulfillment. My goal is to grow out of that shed and use it to store carriage. Lovely. But that shed will build itself. It will pay for itself. Then we will scale out of that. We'll have new purpose built a hundred hundred and fifty thousand 150,000 square foot place where we will do fulfillment for other companies across the north south border importing in from Europe that shed will be fit for purpose and that will just be for my charge maybe a little helicopter Love it. come here I think someone needs you there yeah um that's all right no worries well we'll get this wrapped up guys we've had quite a few people watching we'll get followed up shortly yeah, if you have any other questions, guys, feel free to we'll wrap this up in kind of like five minutes. Anything else? Any top tips? Top tips? Cash flow business. What would you have done differently? Ooh. 2017, apart from buy Bitcoin. Not set up a limited company, but that's a personal thing for me. Mm. I, when I bought another limited company, probably kept it live in the UK so that I could get a, a second bounce back loan. They would have been oh, big <laughs> Neighbor of mine, yes. this might be slander, but he's currently fighting extradition, so he's not going to sue me. Had 37 companies, took out a bounce back loan in all of them, and cleared off to the Algarve with 1.8 million. Mm, I have done that differently. <laughs> no, because he's now trying to sell a couple hundred acres of land, which 
are valued at well, no, they're only valued at nine hundred. But anyway, you have to leave the country over. Not what I want. Um, my name's very important to me. Um, what would I have done differently? Um, would you have went at the wholesale earlier, or did you need to kind of cut your teeth first of all? I cut my teeth in RA though. Uh, the OA, I would have took on VAs a lot sooner. Yes. I would have got training a lot sooner because people say, oh, I can do it on my own. It won't cost me money. It will cost you money. You just won't pay it out in the form of an invoice you can write off as a tax expense. Um, you will pay money. Yeah. I have, if we look here, that box, the one between the two pallets, so the V square one. A, there's, you can't see it, but there's four boxes sitting there. They're probably going to cost me two or three grand because I went gung-ho. And I swear I did my due diligence to keep it, but I'm mean, sitting in the back of my language, there was probably something else got it checked. And yeah, they tanked. So two grand and one purchase because I was a big lad. Ten grand, single order. I'm a class. No. Um, do your due diligence. Be prepared to take risks, but make sure they're informed, intelligent risks. Yeah, realize it's not about the money you make today. You don't need the money today. Um, hmm. it's it's in the future as long as you've got enough to cover basic bills and stuff like that. You don't need to have the Lambo lifestyle and stuff. Take on staff, outsource, systemize the things that are going to cost you money today, but save you money tomorrow. Those are the things that I would have done a wee bit quicker, and I'm still trying to do that. Like hmm. started this year, I left here. I, I tried not to be in, in the shed as much. I was in it yesterday, but. I try not to be because it doesn't make me money me prepping. And that was really hard because I genuinely love being here. And Aye. to walk away from something I enjoy doing, to do something that I don't enjoy doing, but I need to be doing, that is a responsible business ownership. But it's not fun. Yeah. Well, it's kind of just weighing up that responsibility against kind of, yeah, the kind of tasks that feel good, but ultimately don't get anywhere. Yeah. Cool. Well, guys. We'll wrap this up now. And if anything to sign off on, Eamon? How do people get in touch? Most people slide into my DMs with, <laughs> hi, dear sir. And I instantly block them or throw the life out of them. Uh, drop me a message. A random friend request will probably get ignored because I had two doctors had me as friends this morning from Karachi. What? Never spoke to them. Never known. They just can't look onto their profile because their profile is locked, but they want to be my friends. I'm like, why? Never spoke to you, never met you, don't know who you are. Why you send me around friend requests? Drop me a message, we can have a chat. Get it done, do it. What have you got to lose? Like, an average night out in the UK now, you go for a Chinese takeaway is what, 30, 40 quid. You go for a night out, you're not getting change from a night out from what, 100, 150 quid, maybe 200? That's it, that's it. Nor I. Well, taxi there, taxi back. Dinner, Dinner. buy for drinks. Yeah. Pay the bouncer not to Kebab kick you out. Get home. Yeah. Um, whatever that is, go to your local B and M, Tesco's, as the any of sort of big box stores. Go to the clean section, download the the app. Seller Central. Central yeah. It'll cost you thirty quid a month. If you don't sell them in the first month, they'll give you your money back for his case. Take a punt on two hundred quid. You'll lose money in some of the items. You will, but you'll make money in some of the items, and you'll figure out if it's for you. And if it's not for you, there's no shame in it. Like I was a teacher, I have three degrees. I use none of them apart from bragging rights sometimes. Except that that was a different period in your life. Move on. If you decide Amazon's not for you, cut your losses, move on, do something else, set up puppy daycare, whatever you want to do. Like life's too short. You will not be lying in your deathbed whatever years from now and be like, I wish I had done or I wish I hadn't done. It'll be what you didn't do is what you regret. 100%. Yeah, great way to sign off, guys. And I think next week I'm going to run a workshop on going to run outsourcing. Run yourself, are you? Oh, I wouldn't do that. I haven't done that in years. Uh, I'm going to run a workshop on VAs, how to start outsourcing your business and get a self-managing company. So, Eamon, thank you. Very welcome. <laughs> Sign off, Ola. Sign off, then. Hi, guys. It has been very enjoyable. Yeah. Um, if anybody wants to talk, get in touch, give me a shout. If anybody wants to come visit, yeah, cool. Great. Come visit. Um, yeah. Best of luck in your business. Yeah. Take care, guys. See yeah. you guys.